What is up guys? Welcome to my how to improve your aim video. Today I'm going to go over a few things that helped me personally when I came back to PC gaming. A little background on me. Um, I started PC gaming in high school, kind of fell away from it in college, got into Xbox and whatnot. Still played a lot of video games, but uh, in college a lot of people have consoles and LAN parties and dorms and stuff like that. It's just a little more simple that way. But anyway, recently got back into PC gaming and I kind of had to retrain myself how to aim with keyboard and mouse again, and I thought, mm, I've been PC gaming again for a couple years now, I think I can go over a few things that have helped me in getting my aim back to where it once was. So, uh, as you can see on screen here, this is my Razer Death Adder and my uh, Steel Series mouse mats. Um, the mouse mats are up to you, obviously, uh, if you prefer hard surface or cloth surface. There's actually a video in the, in the description of this video uh, that I did comparing the two and uh, like I said it's it's personal preference and kind of depending on what game I'm playing uh, I'll change that but uh, my Razer Death Adder I've had for a couple years now as well it's the mouse that I got when I got back into PC gaming and I really like it and I've never had a problem with it and no reason to change uh, I know a lot of other people really prefer like the G500 I think it is from Logitech and there's I mean there's a multitudes of mice on online that you can just read reviews about but one thing I will say about gaming mice is uh, it's probably the next most important piece of hardware uh, after you get a nice PC getting a really nice mouse um, is really going to help improve your aim you can have uh, high refresh rate monitors and all kinds of stuff and it's not going to improve your aim. Uh, a nice gaming mouse actually will help you develop the right skill set to be able to aim more more accurately. Uh, what's another $50 you know, to spend on a really nice gaming mouse and a nice mouse pad uh, and just be good to go from the start. Don't worry about your high refresh rate monitors, your mechanical keyboards, all that kind of stuff. That can wait. Nice gaming mouse I would suggest you start right off the bat with. So uh, the next little bit, I'll move into my uh, overall DPI settings and everything like that. So uh, here you can see my Razer Synapse. This is uh, where I set up my DPI and everything like that. So DPI is basically how many steps the mouse reads over an inch. So you can almost think of it like a sensitivity of sorts. Uh, it's basically how it, what it comes down to. Uh, opposed to something like the polling rate, which is actually how many times it's checking with the computer, or the computer's checking with the mouse as to where it is specifically. So uh, you can tweak those two. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a really high polling rate. I mean, a lot of people, uh, I think the old Counter-Strike pros play with like 400 DPI and like I don't know what their, their polling rate was, but it, it, it's really interchangeable how you set this up is what I'm trying to say. So find some stuff that works for you. The reason I settled on 1800 is because uh, that's kind of the middle ground and I was having games that I couldn't get my sensitivity low enough on. So I just decided I'll turn down my DPI, um, keep my polling rate and obviously turn off acceleration. You never want that on. I don't even know why that's an option, but you basically can uh, turn down the DPI and it's like turning down your overall sensitivity. Uh, this is just where I do it. I don't mess with my window sensitivity or anything like that. Uh, this is just what I'm used to. So that's all I'm going to talk about in the software and hardware side. Now let's get into some games and I'll explain why and what game modes you should be trying to help improve. Alrighty, now I'll just quickly go over some games that I recommend you try out. Uh, Battlefield 3 is great because there's always populated TDM servers and they are a really high ticket count. I would say BF4 but um, the ticket count is only like 100 as of recording this video, and the sound is also broken as of recording this video. So that's why I say BF3, more people, uh, higher ticket servers, it's just gonna be a better experience, especially when you're just going in to prove your aim. And I'll go into what I'm talking about specifically here in a second. Uh, on Counter-Strike uh, Go, they also have deathmatch servers, really easy to get in, you can get them really quick, and make. they have high, uh, high tick count servers like 128 and a lot of the deathmatch so uh, if anybody has complaints about that I don't know what else they could want anyway uh, you can go in there use something like uh, the AK it has a lot of recoil you can really train your arm and your hand uh, what you have to do another thing I will recommend is going into empty servers and just find a gun that you're having trouble controlling and just shoot it at a blank wall see what it does see what the recoil pattern is and then see if you can correct that on your own 
Um, there's no real use uh, in just going in and being like, I can't figure this gun out, I, I give up. I'll just use an M16 or whatever. Actually try to go into an empty server if you really want to improve your accuracy and see what that recoil is doing. Is it going up and to the left? Is it going to the right? Is it going down? Uh, it, may, it may take a little practice on your part and a little memorization on what guns do what. Uh, a lot of people's tendency to get in is just, okay, I pull down on the mouse, that fixes recoil. Not necessarily. A lot of times you might just have to learn to burst fire it or if the recoil pattern is something that you can figure out, I mean a lot of the really good players just know recoil patterns really good or a lot of the good shots out there and they can just control it just by moving their mouse in a certain direction and whatnot. So go out there, especially in Counter-Strike, the AK does take some time to master. Uh, it is really powerful, but it has hellacious recoil. If you just spray the AK full auto, you're going to have to be pointing the crosshairs at the ground for it to be going uh, where you're actually wanting. So uh, just take some time, really really invest the, the effort if you want to see results. Don't just be... Uh, kind of bitter about it and be like, ah, this game sucks or I'll never figure it out. It just takes practice, like I said. So once you're feeling comfortable with the gun, maybe you finally figured out the recoil pattern in an empty server, then go out, uh, go into TDM, try some crazy shots, try to hit things across the map, try to get a call to hacker. <laughs> That's what I try to do when I go into team deathmatch servers is like, I try no scopes from across the map. I try shooting slugs out of my shotgun from way far away and uh, 44 mag headshots from across the map. Try that stuff. See if you can't get called a hacker because that actually, that's when I feel like I'm actually doing well. That's when I think my aim is the most on point is when people are uh, throwing out accusations. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out the video. Like always, leave a comment down below if you have any other questions or even suggestions for anybody else that might come across this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.